Mountain Wave Dangers. Hello folks, Rod Machado here. I'd like to talk to you about the dangers associated with mountain wave phenomena and why it's important to understand that we need to use the 45 degree approach strategy when approaching any mountain range above which we suspect that winds are blowing in excess of 20 to 25 knots. Now, take a look at this graphic. This graphic makes the point. The magenta dots represent a few, certainly not all, of the mountain wave accidents that occurred in Southern California. And the dark green and brown areas represent mountain ranges. Look very carefully here because those magenta dots are right on the lee side, right on the downwind side of those peaks. And that should make the case for why we should use caution when approaching a mountain range. Take a look at this slide. The yellow arrow represents the flight path of the aircraft. The red arrow represents the wind direction. Now this aircraft was flying perpendicular to the Peninsular Mountain Range in Southern California with winds 21 to 29 knots and the aircraft went down as a result of downdrafts in this area. And this aircraft was on an IFR flight plan, which is interesting when you think about it because uh, we think that on an IFR flight plan that the minimum en route altitude guarantee of 2,000 feet above ground level in any mountainous area is going to protect us from the effects of a downdraft. Well, that's not necessarily true. And in particular, if you have a downdraft generated by winds of, let's say, 40 knots, 45 knots on the leeward side of a mountain, it might be wise to request a higher altitude rather than operating at the base of the MEA. Then we have a Cessna 182 in 1990 operating in the southern end of the San Joaquin Valley and it went down. The wind speeds were unknown but it was on the leeward side of the peak at the time. Here's a 1994 accident of a Cessna 177 RG and the winds at altitudes here were 4 knots gusting to 18 knots. Now this just happens to be in the northern portion of the Owens Valley up near Mammoth. The winds were gusting 4 to 18 knots and the aircraft apparently went down in a mountain wave action as a result of those winds. Here's another slide with winds 15 to 25 knots and this accident occurred in 1995. It was a Piper Arrow operating at 10,300 feet and again on the leeward side of the mountain. Now we have a slide of a Bonanza V-35B heading northwest with winds out of the west in the Owens Valley area and it too went down. Then we have an area up near Northern California called Eagle Peak. Now Eagle Peak is really interesting because when you get up in this area you have one long mountain range here that is responsible for several mountain wave accidents and one of them involved a Cessna 182 operating at 14,000 feet MSL on an IFR flight plan heading directly west, directly perpendicular to the mountain range and the wind was from the southwest here and it encountered a downdraft that it was incapable of climbing out of and the winds were 57 knots. I think the wise course of action here, IFR or VFR flight plan, would simply be to go around that mountain range or not fly that day. Here's another example of a crash near Eagle Peak and this one involved an Aero Commander and it was operating at 14,000 feet and the winds were 45 knots and it went down in a mountain wave action. Now, I don't want you to walk away from this presentation thinking, oh my gosh, I will never operate over a mountain range. No, no, no. That is not the lesson I want you to learn here. What I am saying is to use caution and use a defensive strategy when approaching any mountain range, in particular one where you might not know what the wind velocity is over that range. Therefore, when you approach that range, you approach it at a 45 degree angle. That allows you to turn away from the mountain range through an arc of 90 degrees rather than an arc of 135 degrees, which is what you would experience if you approach that mountain range at a 90 degree angle. It's just a good defensive strategy. Of course, if you can, it's always wise to cross a mountain as high as you can. Sure, it would be nice to cross the mountain as high as we possibly can, but sometimes that's just not a practical strategy. So, if you're going to approach the mountain range, approach it at a 45 degree angle and take a look and at least cross at a minimum of 2,000 feet above ground level and if you know the winds are blowing at 20 to 25 knots, then perhaps you'll even cross it higher while still applying the same 45 degree approach strategy.